You're watching Voices in Mystery. I'm your host, Nancy Carlson. With me today is author John Desjardins from Kishwaukee College. Is that the right? Did I say it right? That's right. In Illinois. John lives in uh, northern Illinois and has brought with him a book called Bleeder. Tell me about that book. Bleeder is not gory, despite the title. Sounds gory. <laughs> Uh, in Bleeder, my protagonist, a classics professor at a community college, is wounded in a school shooting. And he retreats to his brother's hunting cabin in rural Illinois to write a book on Aristotle in peace and quiet, uh, something he's always wanted to do. But when he gets to the tiny town of River Falls in the middle of March, the town is full of all these sick people. Wheelchairs and oxygen tanks, crutches, the, the whole business. The hotels are full, the campgrounds are full. He's wondering what's going on here. Turns out the new parish priest in town is reputed to be a healing stigmatic, uh, the kind of person with the marks of Christ and the hands and such. And he wants nothing to do with this hocus pocus. Uh, he's a lapsed Presbyterian and agnostic. His wife Peggy died from leukemia two years before. He just wants to be left alone to write his book. But he enters a cautious and reluctant friendship with the cleric Father Ray because he's an Aquinas scholar and has a fine library, thank you. And so they have coffee and get to talking and they, they, they talk shop. Then on Good Friday, Father Ray collapses and dies during the Good Friday service in front of horrified parishioners. Is it a miracle or bloody murder? And f my uh, protagonist, Reed Stubblefield, needs to get to the truth of the matter, applying Aristotelian logic, hmm. because he's the prime person of interest in this mysterious death. And there are some people in the town who really do not want this mystery solved. Oh, yeah, that's a great setup for the book. And the word bleeder? Uh, refers to the uh, stigmata, uh, the alleged uh, stigmata on Father Ray. That remains a mystery in the book, whether or not it's authentic or not. So I, I treat that with a great deal of respect, and I hope authenticity. Does this? Are you setting this up to be a possible series? It is uh, the second uh, book in the series. Viper is due out around New Year's. It features Selena de la Cruz, a Latina insurance agent, who is a minor character in Bleeder. When she stepped onto the stage, I knew she had a story of her own. She was <laughs> such a forceful presence. And uh, it turns out she has a shady background with a DEA that catches up to her. But she lives in northern Illinois in the she's same little town? Yeah, she's been trying to get away from her past with the DEA. She's changed her name. Uh, she's entered the insurance business. Uh, she just wants to be left alone. Now, back to Bleeder. Were you impacted by the, the sh active shooter shootings at Northern Illinois University? Were you there then and, and realized the horror of, of that occurrence? Uh, we were in a faculty meeting at Kish uh, when that was happening. And when we got out uh, and we were going home, going our separate ways, we could see emergency vehicles on the highways and lights flashing, and we knew something terrible had happened someplace. I thought it was an accident or something. But when I got home and turned the TV on just to find out if something had really happened over at Northern, uh, I, I heard about the, the school shootings that way. It, it was horrible. And did Kishwaukee t do a new action plan for themselves in case something like that could happen? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, a very detailed plan. Every uh, instructor has been trained. We have, uh, we've had rehearsals for all kinds of emergencies. Uh, shooter in the hallway, uh, of course, tornado, and other disasters. So we hope we're ready. And your protagonist, you can see how it would have affected someone so deeply they'd want to get away from it all? Is that? Reed Stubblefield is a deeply wounded man. He's wounded physically with the gunshot wounds. Uh -huh. uh, he's uh, wounded emotionally because his wife Peggy has passed away recently. Uh, so he, he's got a lot of uh, uh, inner healing that has to happen. Now I have a, a curiosity about your being a professor at a community college and being a fiction writer too. Are you on the tenure? I mean, is your is your uh, school tenured uh, where you're on a track of tenure and promotion, and that you have to publish scholarly articles in order to get that? Uh, we have uh, we have tenured positions, but we don't have ranks. Yeah. Uh, everyone is regarded as an instructor. We mm -hmm. don't have associate or assistant professorships, that sort of thing. So does your work here count? Do they say, oh, Bleeder, another publication <laughs> by John? Uh, we're not required to do research or writing, uh, but it's, uh, it's approved. Good. And I think as an instructor, you gain credibility with students if you are active in your field. So I teach fiction writing, and I teach the detective fiction class. Oh. And so students know that I'm active in the field. Well, they should get your autograph in all the books, and you know, they'll say, "I knew him when I was I, I was should, in college." I should require the book in my course. They they have a nickname for you. What is that? 
Oh, Johnny Dangerous. Why? Uh, John Desjardins can be hard to pronounce or remember, <laughs> but Johnny Dangerous is uh, easy to say and easy to find on the web. What, what about your beautiful name? Where does that come from? Uh, Desjardins is French-Canadian. I'm not sure what it means. Desjardins means of the gardens, so it may be a variant of that. Oh. The, uh, how many years have you taught? Fifteen years. Before that, I was in radio and TV for a long time. Yeah, I read that in your biography, Public Radio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you teach journalism as well. So, r r besides the English? At a community college, you generally have a wider range of courses that you're asked to do. So I split my time between English and journalism, uh, given my background in radio and TV. Well, that being the case, I'm interested in e-books and publishing, mm. um, not on the you know, with a paper paper to hold, mm -hmm. but do you think that there's a, the people will turn to their Kindles and, and read books that way, or will they always want to grasp paper? Mm. Uh, there will always be an audience for the paper book. I think there are some who really like the, the feel of it, the weight in your hand, uh, even the smell of the page. Uh, I'm a person like that. But the, the digital revolution is with us, and we have to deal with that. How do you write? Do you write after school, or are you an early morning person? What is your I habit? I tend to be early morning. I'm up at 5, listen to uh, National Public Radio for a short while, and then swing out of bed and get to work. <laughs> and your students, have you ever worked any of them in, or at least their personalities into your book? No, I try to keep real people out. <laughs> yeah, they, they, <laughs> they don't want to be uh, known as the shooter or anything. No, I don't want to hurt any real relationships <laughs> writing about fictional ones. What are you working on now? I'm working on the third book in this series. Mm -hmm. So there's Bleeder, then Viper. Third one will probably have an ER ending. Uh, it will continue the same characters, Reed Stubblefield and uh, Selena de la Cruz. They'll get together and work on a case together. Oh, romantically, do you think? Uh, yes, they'll, they'll, <laughs> you, you've got to have that tension going, too. <laughs> it's been a pleasure interviewing John Desjardins. He's uh, from... The Kishwaukee Community College area up in the northern Illinois, and uh, the author of the book Bleeder, which you'll find on your shelf. And I thank you so much for visiting Voices in Mystery. So thank you, John. Thank you so much.